your life. Welcome to the Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832 772 Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Society Now, a show that endeavors to bring you riveting content that inspires, incites, and invokes conversation. Um, this is um, not fake news, and we also we always endeavor to bring you real stories, real facts of what's going on in the world today. My name is Kira Laws, and you can follow me on Instagram at the Modern Day Cindy. That's Cindy with an I and not a Y. And I have my handsome co-host. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's your man, Kaylin Laws, a.k.a. Senior Wapo. Do me a quick favor. Go to Instagram. Go to Twitter. Go to the Facebook. No, go to Facebook. And the type Facebook. The Facebook, right. I like the movie. The Instagram. <laughs> and type in S-E-N-O-R-G-U-A-P-O-7-1-3. That's my handle on all social media outlets. And again, you're tuned in to GS for now. All right, you're... What did I? What did I? You're not for GS for now. Yes, to society now. With with the man, man from GS for gentlemen. Yeah, there it you. is. Me. There, you. there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Save. <laughs> Cover and save me, baby. Appreciate it. We appreciate <laughs> you uh, coming in and, and tuning in to us and viewing with us uh, each and every week. Um, we just have a good time, and we're so thankful that you take time out of your day to listen to what we have to say, Kira. Listen, I, I don't know. It's, it's it's Monday. It's it's the second day of July. We're excited about that because apparently July is a great month. It's hot as the Dickens outside. Uh, look here. I, I mean. think the whole world is on fire right now. I'm not quite. I'm. I don't know if people are. It's not just Texas, y'all. It's everywhere. Apparently, everywhere. Well. It's pretty hot outside, and so we just want to give you some cool, fo cool facts about mm -hmm. what's going on today. Yep. Um, we have today a special guest, and I think do. you. I think you're more in a position to introduce that. Well, I, I, I listen. I, because I you have history the, with some of his history. I would take okay. on the challenge. You see okay. what I'm saying? I met this brother uh, through a very, very good, a lifelong childhood friend of mine. Shout out to Christy Harris. Love you so much. Uh, and uh, we grew up, Christy and I grew up together. Uh, our families grew up together um, in, uh, back home in Dallas, Texas. And I uh, was at church one day and I heard Kaylin. I turned around. I was like, I know that, I know that, I know that Kaylin. Sure enough, it was Christy, but she was this guy uh, sitting with her. And I kind of looked at, outside of my eye, like, who is this dude with my sister? I ain't really talked to him in a long time, but who is this dude with my sister? I've seen him on a couple of pictures, but I don't really know fam like this. Like, um, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um, Come to find out, man, great dude, great guy, loves the Lord. But we we share a, a major similar interest, and in, in that's besides the Father, um, that's fitness, and that's that's health and wellness, and just making sure that people around us that we love, and just people, period, are living the healthiest and, and best way, uh, best life possible. And I love what he st he started a phenomenal organization that we're going to learn a lot more about here in the coming uh, these next coming minutes, man. That's my guy Spencer Foreman. What's up, man? How are you? Listen, bro, I certainly appreciate you coming in, man. You know, we we like to, I, you know, I, I really believe in don't not thinking of yourself, high, you know, uh, more highly than you ought to. But I also know that I'm a king's kid, so I'm royalty. So I, I, I love to bring in other kings in the building, man. And, and your, crown, your crown is shining real bright, brother. Um, so tell us, tell all the viewers and the listeners, who, who is Spencer? It's 
Spencer Foreman, uh, he is uh, starting off first and foremost a child of God, kingdom man who loves his family, um, loves people, loves helping people, and just really determined to, you know, just, just really walk in God's purpose and fulfill his purpose and, and, and just do my best to be a part of changing the world and having a shift in the atmosphere. I love it, man. I love it. So, so when you say do your purpose, man, Expound upon it. What it what like like a lot of people in this life, bro. You know, we're just we're young. We're thirties. I'm not sure how old you are, but we're not. We're, I'm mid thirties. I'm sure you're early thirties. Thirty one. Thirty. Okay, early thirties. And so, um, a lot of folks are searching for their purpose, and and they get to and they get to fifty, sixty years <laughs> old, and they had, and they had their midlife crisis, and but 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 tell me what walking in purpose is for you specifically, and how did you get to that point where you understood where to walk? Right. You know what I mean. Um, I mean, it definitely, I think it's a chain reaction on how you were raised and the village that you were in, right? You know, Bible talks about train up a child. So how your family has raised you and in the situation they put you in kind of gives you the start on, on how you can figure out the past. You yeah. Because the father, which is a very, very important uh, role in a relationship and a family, it's up to him to be able to lead his family and lead up his, his, his children, son and daughter. So I would say that just throughout my life, I was... Uh, involved in sports um i love basketball that was that was a sport that, that got me through high school got me to a scholarship in in, um, in college and um i was in martial arts swimming all kind of athletics and i just had a passion for that and i also was uh, raised in the church mm -hmm. i have a god-fearing family my grandfather was a pastor for 38 years i have uncles and cousins that are pastors so it's something yeah. that i've always been around and even growing up in high school um, I went to pr two private schools. I was a private Christian school. My first college, my first two years at uh, Palm Beach Atlantic University, which okay. is a Christian university. Uh -huh. So I've always been around God, whether I liked it or not. Like, yeah. He put me in certain places where right, he always right, right. Was around me. I, I think sometimes, it, I mean, that's key, right? I, yeah. I think that we have, to, we have to recognize our situation, recognize our circumstances, recognize our environments, right? right? And I believe that whether good or bad, we're placed in there to affect change and, and, and to learn something from it and then to take that experience, right, yeah. and, and grow from it and then give the game to the rest of the world. Exactly, and just going back to the experience. So experiencing all those things and, and also just being put in leadership roles yeah. like student council president, mm -hmm. point guard, team captain, right. all those things. I was in a leadership position and I enjoyed seeing – uh, and being a part of development of yeah, other people and yeah. encouraging them and motivating them to be their best self. So just looking back and, and realizing that all these things I've done and I had a passion for, it was kind of an easy thing for me to do. <coughs> it came about for me finally realizing the purpose that God had for me yeah. and starting P413. So, so tell us, perfect segue, man. What is P4, P413? I know what it stands for and I yeah. know what it is. Um, but give, but but even deeper, dig into that, man. Uh, right. Where did it come from? How did it start? What is it? Yeah, so P413, again, it's P413. And I get it. A lot of people can get confused on that sometimes because you, you got a lot of people say P90X or P12 right. or right. P23. Yeah. P413. Yeah. So what it stands for, and this will help you uh, better uh, uh, say it when, when next time we say it, and God willing, we'll say it a lot in the future. But it's Philippians 413. That's what it's inspired by. And... Uh, of course, the Bible verse is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite Bible verse. That was I wore the number 13 in college, so it's it's something oh, that, yeah, yeah. That I've always been around. I've always been connected. Hopefully you average 13 assists a game. Yeah, 13 assists, 13 rebounds. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'll put up LeBron numbers. Though, <laughs> Shout out to the Lakers, by the way. Yeah, but, we'll uh, get to that in a minute. <laughs> but, yeah, so that, that's been my favorite number, my favorite Bible verse, so – Putting all those things together, and once again, just putting all the things together that I've done in my life journey of mm -hmm. basketball, having a, a just a fire for God and and motivating, loving to help other people grow in all facets of life. Those are all things, and I'm be able to do. I'm able to do all those things yeah. through Jesus Christ, who gives me strength. No doubt. So I was like, man, I love working out. I love God. And I love helping people. I need to do a boot camp, and it's P four thirteen Philippians four thirteen, and what it is is it brings a devotional, a workout, oh. and prayer, yeah. and, uh, you know, donations as well, which we are working with Star of Hope to bring out donations, clothes, toiletry, shoes, things like that. So putting all those things together, working out, 
praying uh, and worshiping God, and then also just developing people spiritually, <coughs> mentally, and physically so okay. they can get stronger. Those are all things that embody P413. That's dope, man. And I love the fact that you uh, partnered with uh, Star of Hope. Shout out to the Star of Hope. Listen, Shout they do yes. phenomenal work in the city of Houston, uh, helping uh, women uh, who are in dire circumstances. Yes. Uh, and so i um, been working with them for a long I love the new sound effects. There yeah, it is. Yeah. We got the we, we have, got the applause we going got 30 today. people in here. Yeah, man. 30 people yeah, yeah I love it. Love it. Right. And um and and so it's one of those things, man, that when when you start talking about purpose and, and let's 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 set up a, a little something real quick. I forgot I should have done this on, on on the front end. There we go. Uh the music in the background. No, it ain't working right now. Hold on. Let me let me let, let me go keep it going. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but but I think it's important, man, to partner. You know, when we start when you start talking about we can do all things, all things is all things, right? Yeah. But it's a we can do. That that's 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 the part of the scripture, right? That a lot of people don't focus on. Yes. They they hear the all things mm. and they apply to themselves, but it's a we. Amen. Right? You have to have a subject and a predicate in, in a in a sentence. The subject of that sentence is we. That's it. That the, the you know, if I could be the professor laws for a second, the teacher, the direct object that's being modified in that sentence isn't the things, it's the we. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And so 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 often, um, it's important that, that we that we understand that it's a we and not a he, yeah. it, not a me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I think it's really important that we do that and we understand uh, that you, you're empowering people, right? Definitely. Mentally, spiritually, physically. But we also at the Spirit want to empower folks financially. In Amen. fact, this portion of the show is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. Did you know? That only four states in the U.S. offer financial education. 33% or more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Please do not become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at one 844 700 Four four six three, or email us at info at houstonhousewivesoffinance.com. Now, ask how you can participate in a complimentary, again, that means free, financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age, are the new faces of the new age of financial services. So, yeah, you know, I, I think going back to P413, man, that's the key to that, man, is the we part. And I, I really appreciate the fact that you're partnering. Uh, with with an established organization that's really doing some dope things in the community, we're here talking with Spencer Foreman of P Four Thirteen. Let's let's keep it go going, man. So, what challenges as an entrepreneur? Because um, we're we're kind of seeing a a, a a rise in entrepreneurship here awesome. uh, in 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 I believe. Uh, so, what kind of challenges are you are are you seeing as an entrepreneur? Are you facing? It's interesting. Uh, it's a great question. And, and shout out to everybody that is is taking that uh, initiative to want to become entrepreneurs and, and, and to just walk your own path. Of course, the path that God is leading you, I hope. But um, the challenge as an entrepreneur is that you have to um, be able to accept not only failure, but you also have to be able to accept that not everybody's going to like what you're doing or accept what you're doing or maybe not understand what you're doing. A lot of times we get that ambition that initially right when we got right when we get into our entrepreneurship and start a business, we want everybody to, to be on board. And sometimes that can be difficult because everybody's not the same. Everybody doesn't have the same mindset and some people might just not get it at first. So you have to just keep pushing. So for me, just the fact that I have a very unique uh, situation of combining the, the three things of spiritual uh, fitness um, and, and mentality and, and just being strong for all those things, it, it becomes tough because uh, it's, not, it's not done a lot in, 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 in the fitness realm where, yeah. we, where we highlight the spiritual side of it. I mean, uh, yo, like that's so, that's so true. Yeah. Um, because it, it is our belief that he came to minister to all parts of us, yeah. right? He came to, to save all parts of right. us. You know, I mean, you can go scripture after scripture right. about health and, and, and types of diets that are in the Bible, you know, yeah. that are in the Bible, all that kind of deal. So, I mean, I, I really I really dig that, brother. I really do. Um, so, so 
how was because I know you're developing a, a, a we were talking yesterday uh, while we were out and you, you're developing a nonprofit as well mm-hmm. how how is that what is that process like how is that process been for you uh, it's actually it's been really well because I just had a, a great team surrounding me come on um, come on team come on yeah. see that go that we again yeah, man yeah. it's 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 a, it's a team <laughs> effort it's a uh, shout out to mr. Greg Fulton and also uh, to Tierra Gilder my cousin who is also the founder of SAS sister advocating second steps which is a nonprofit as well so she set that up uh, before me and she just pretty much showed me the ropes her and and mr greg and they just had all the paperwork and everything set up for me and fill it out and turn it in so it was a really smooth process for me and and that's what it's all about as far as community and having a village you know people uh not only working and getting things done for yourself but you're getting things done and setting a foundation for others so the process has been really well and uh all the paperwork's been sent in we're just waiting for the the feedback so we can uh know that we are official 501c3 which yeah, is yeah so 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 the language is just so you know when, you, when you're talking to people and this is a little game because i just went through this with an organization yeah, okay. that i'm on the board with the language is once you put your application in your 501c3 pending pending that's what you tell them it sounds official you can get a letter you can put it you can like legally put that on documentation <clears throat> and say we're 501c3 pending sweet um and once you're pending they still can you can retroactively if it's if once you get donations or whatever you can retroactively give them uh, a receipt okay so so you they can still give it to you and then once you get approved say okay he gave it to me in this year as long as that receipt is dated in this year they still can count for their taxes for the next year just a little game for you just like literally just went through that we like, are two 501c3 <laughs> pending anybody out there <laughs> Holler at us, P413. We are willing to accept anything. Let's work together. Listen, I love it, man. I, I love it. So you, you you told us already why P, P413. Um, let me know, though, personally, what that scripture means to Spencer. Mm. It's just something that I, 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 I lived uh, through and experienced my whole life. Like, I am a man that... You know, I, I'm a jack of all trades, if you will. I like to do a lot of things. I can I can dabble in things. I like athletics again. I've done all kind of sports. Um, school, I loved all the subjects in school. So doing all things is something that, you know, I, I kind of dive into to, to do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I like to be able to help as many people as possible. And just whatever God has wants to use me to do, I want to be able to do all those things. But also just being able to do it through Jesus Christ, who's who's strengthening me through all that. I don't ever want to take full credit for it because you know the glory is in mine. It's His. Yes, no doubt. So that that's personally for me how <laughs> how it how it comes about. And um, yeah, just a testimony on on the P four thirteen. Yeah, go ahead, man. Please. I, I I live it out, and and I was just a uh, you know the normal young man that was having a good time getting out of college and and. Uh, finished getting my master's degree in uh, marketing and, and management and you know just having a good time working and, and it was more I was very individual at that time and even mm-hmm. though I still I loved I can do all things I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in P413 that's my verse I was caught in a moment at a time where I was focusing just on me mm-hmm. and wanting to get ahead and make money and 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 just you know um, be a successful businessman in, in society's world right. very selfish and uh, I began to transition and wanting to be like, man, I need to do more. I need to actually get involved and, and be a reason for someone to change and become better and, and to leave a legacy for something other than just me making a lot of money and, and living a good life. I need to do more. And um, as I was transitioning that, I was still on the fence. I was lukewarm, if you will. Yeah. It's getting spewed yeah. out. Yeah, I was lukewarm. <laughs> so then on uh, November 1st, I think it was 2015 or 2014, one of those. I got in a real bad car accident um, going down 59 South. And it was like the day after it rained real bad. And I had a hydroplane hit the right side of the shoulder and then spun all the way across 59 and then hit the left side of the shoulder. Right by that exit by Shepard. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, by Kirby, by the Kirby okay. exit. And uh, I, I nobody hit me. This was like at 8 o'clock in the evening so traffic is rolling on a sunday and nobody hit me um uh, i didn't get seriously injured and then even after the car accident i was in the passenger seat and i i was driving i ended up in the passenger seat and i say i had a seatbelt on i'm pretty sure i did 
but it was still kind of fuzzy. But the, the crazy thing about it is, you know, the whole saying, Jesus take the wheel. So mm -hmm. I felt like Jesus took the wheel because yeah. I was in the passenger seat. Uh, wow. No bruises, no breaks, nothing like that. But I and, and, you know, just after that situation, I realized like, man, you know, God is really keeping me. And he's he has me here for a reason, literally. And I need to start taking advantage of this moment because not a lot of people walk away from a situation like that, unfortunately. And I did. So, you know, after that, that was a snap. Like, all right, let's get it. And I really just dove into starting P413 and, and walking in his purpose that he has for me. Man, that, that that's amazing, man. That, that's so phenomenal. Um, you talked about... <clears throat> P4, P413 being sort of like a mantra or, you know, something that you subscribe to, something that you reference and, and you go and read it and view it all the time. And we want to talk uh, about some subscriptions and give our Facebook Live family an opportunity to subscribe to our show on all the major platforms, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher. Uh, review our show in iTunes with constructive feedback and share this Facebook Live post and the entire show with your family and friends and don't forget to donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. You can donate at www.thesphere.tv forward slash donate. Tierra Nicole, we appreciate you uh, chiming in and hanging out with John Guest. My man John said he need that shirt, so you might want to. Yeah, I'll yeah. make sure you connect. I got <laughs> I'll you. make sure y'all connect, man. Yes, sir. And uh, shout out to Artist Mom. We appreciate you tuning in as well. Um, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you soon. So, lastly, man. Um. Who are your kind of your professional inspiration, so to speak? Like, yeah. if if any, you know what I'm saying? Like, what 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 people or persons, you know, uh, do you look to? Um, to start off, um, you you just gave her a shout out, but Tierra Nicole, that's Tierra Nicole Gilder, uh, my cousin, who is the founder and president of SAS, uh, Sister Advocating Second Steps Foundation. She is a big inspiration for me because um, she started. Um, the the nonprofit organization on once again just really uh, letting God use her in a major way for uh, people but more specifically women to take second steps in their lives so definitely appreciate uh, everything that she's done and just leading the way for me to want to um, move forward in, in, in my calling so shout out to Tierra uh, secondly I'd say Christiana Harris um, my girlfriend, um, she is the first doctor in her family, and that is inspiring to me. To uh, you know, a lot of times you you hear the stories of, of uh, generational occupation, people just following what their parents did, but she was the first to to want to become a doctor and 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 to be a dentist at that, and that's very inspiring for her to just really um, listen to the Holy Spirit talk to her and move her to want to do something outside of what she's seen all of her life and that's very special and very uh, uh powerful to 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 see so uh, shout out to those two people uh, come on shout out come on come on come on yeah um but also you know uh oprah winfrey is amazing she's, amazing she, she does a lot in the community she she does a lot of things in uh various channels um, also, shout out to LeBron James. I learned a lot from him. Kobe Bryant. All these people that I'm naming that, that inspire me, they live that I can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me uh, verse as well because they are not just in one lane in what they do. They, they, they uh, put themselves in and they get involved in different uh, facets of life and just use all the gifts and talents that they are blessed with to not only just use it for themselves, but to empower and to change the world. So those are people that, to me, just really don't limit themselves. They go outside the limits of society and just really walk their own path and then let God lead them. That's amazing. I mean, I think you mentioned a lot of people that, that inspire most of us because they're so visible. They're so highly visible. The LeBrons, the Kobe's, Oprah Winfrey. And of course, you went into your inner circle, which is important. And I think you talked about the teaming aspect of that. I think there's a balance to it because sometimes people are limit, feel like they're limited because they don't feel like they can have mentors or those they look to that's accessible. But you can still reach outside of your 
you know, your uh, inner circle and, and learn from those who are in front of us who are, right. I think they're put there in front of us to inspire us yes. to do, do more. Yes. So don't feel like you can't go and reach out or do more than, um, then, you know, feel like you can't achieve a dream or achieve a goal just because you don't feel like you have someone directly walking with you. I believe God has allowed those persons to be visible for a reason. And they're using that pedestal very well. They so are. That, that's definitely. That's why I named them. And also Steph Curry. I love Steph Curry. Oh, definitely. He's a basketball player on the, in the NBA and he is unapologetically yeah, a believer. Yeah, so, he's like, absolutely I, I a believer. I love that about him too. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and those, all those persons we can learn from for sure because they, they have taken the time to take a stance for things that they know is right. Yes. Um, and they don't bow down for what they believe in, not just their religious beliefs, but also what they believe is right for humans. Um, and I think we're seeing such a shift in our society right now because we're seeing a, a very clear divide. So a lot of divisiveness about, um, especially when it comes to race, um, ethnicity, yes. gender, it's a lot of divisiveness and we continue to see it in news. All these news stories keep popping up. Um, one that's current right now is um, what's going on. And I'm not sure if you heard about this, but this going on in small chain restaurants. We heard about the Waffle House. We heard about Starbucks. But now it's another one um, that's Chili's recently. Okay. Um, Chili's uh, recently. Uh, the manager of a Chili's called the police on a group of black people that were outside talking in the parking lot. Mm. Now, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this. Usually when you go out with a group of friends, you know, we usually take our conversations, usually carry on. Right, so after we right. leave the table, because we don't want to lauder, you know what I mean? <laughs> we carry on the conversation in front of the cars and stuff like that because we came and paid for our food. Yeah. Um, but the manager called the police on um you know the the group that was there and it, so you, you start to wonder like what is this whole call the police thing because it's been a little bit more frequent than normal it's not for anything justified either M most of these um cases especially with the restaurants the establishments um of course we've seen the stuff recently with you know barbecue becky and permit peggy or whatever her name permit was patty, yeah. Pat patty. yeah whoever yeah. but you know this whole thing i'm gonna call the police on you um in your word is they've been em emboldened mm -hmm. um to Absolutely. call the call the police on persons that don't look like them um and i think that this right now in our society we're having this issue and we're seeing a lot of persons that have platforms really stand up and speak on about speak out about it so what what, yeah. what how is this thing so, on a shift so, when it's going to get better so first of all th there used to be this thing called well, that used to be because it still kind of exists in certain parts of, I think, <coughs> every city. Driving while black. DWB. We've all been told that by, sure. by our parents, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, very well. Now it's eating while black. Now it's EWB. Because we, it, now it's just being black. Yeah, no, it's been being black. But it's specifically like eating while black mm -hmm. is interesting. Because like you said, you know, these small chain restaurants have been doing, you know, um, ha have been going through these. Uh, I don't know what's going on. People losing their doggone mind. They really are. And, yeah. and um, but in terms of the shift, I, I think that. I don't know what it's going to take. All right. it, it, and sometimes it's hard not to be pessimistic because it's, because especially when you're literally congregating in a, in a restaurant when every parking lot on a Friday night or on a Saturday night, you know, that's what you see. People yeah. hang, they go eat, then they go hang out, and they, trying to figure out what the next move is or you know, just just as old school like we used to call it parking lot pimping, you know what I mean? Just yeah. whatever the case right, may right. be, right? So but where is cuz I know you were talking when we were talking about this particular article, yeah. you said something about in New York, mm -hmm. um Giuliani had he enforced yeah. this law that people can't stand outside and talk and congregate. Now, this wasn't New York, this was Louisiana, but to me, where do you talk? So if you can't talk in a restaurant after you eat your meal because you might be considered you need to pay, pay for more food or you can't talk in a Starbucks. I mean, you know, you yeah, can't. Yeah. Where exactly do you talk? Do you go outside in the heat and talk in the park? Like, like what places are going to be okay to talk? Because it seems like every other week you're here in a different scenario about a police being called on black people for having being normal Facts. not not for Facts. being disruptive and i, I want to make that clear because a lot of times that's the conversation right well what did they do it's not a disruption it's just a normalcy and them being normal carrying out everyday things right. and i think that it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out i, I believe um all of this is happening for a reason mm -hmm. i don't it know what it, it's it exposing has to be for sure. a, a lot of craziness in our society yeah, yeah, that, for, that, for, that laid know, dormant even for a long time exactly even medically right in order for a wound to heal, it needs to be exposed first. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, the, you know, for these wounds to, we we thought we were be, past, we thought we were past this. Right. So I, I feel like that in this season, stuff is being exposed. So, no, we still got a little work to do. We still need a couple more sutures. Still need a little bit more antiseptic. We got to pull that scab off of that band aid off, right, to let the air hit it 
so that it, it, it can heal a little bit more. Well, how do we how do we reconcile it's that painful. with that? Right. How do we reconcile that, though, when we have when the cops are called or when the Bad cops guys. do interact with us? It's always very aggressive and or abrasive. Yeah. Um, it was another news article that was out of, that happened in Lancaster. Um, and in Lancaster, police were called or excuse me, police came out and tased an Omar black man who was sitting on the corner. And I'm not sure if y'all saw that video. Um, but the issue is and we heard it. We actually listened to the video. There was two cops and mm-hmm. they gave him two different orders. Mm-hmm. One said, put your, la- your legs straight. The other one said, cross, cross your legs. So and when he crossed them, they the one him. that said, put your legs straight, got mad. And, and tased, tased him. him. While he was already sitting on the ground with his literally his hands straight out. Not a threat. Not a threat. Not um, a threat. And, and so. I, it's, Yeah. I, and when we see these things, you know, it's sad because when you see these stories, it's kind of like, oh, what exactly can you um, not be in harm, in harm's way? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, because we do have this con- this ongoing conversation happening in our society where we're talking about the um, it's it's just not justifiable. Or it's unjustifiable how they engage us when it's um, when it's potentially a wrong being or when it's actually a wrong being held out at from a person that is not of color right you know we get we t- we typically get more um aggressive encounters yeah and i don't know if what your experience has been as a black man i know we have this conversation a lot but with the experience of you guys when y'all are you know the mindset of how you have to actually be constantly aware yeah and, and, and you know for Spencer, i'd love to i'd love to hear from from you man because you know you said you went to private schools and typically generally speaking private schools don't look like us you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just the way it is. I before before I moved to Memphis, Tennessee, um, the school that I went the schools that I went to were predominantly white, mm-hmm. right? And so um, in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. And so uh, it, what what can you speak to? And, I, and if you can't, it's fine. But but you're a black man in America as well. Can you speak to kind of why are we hate? Why are we feared so? Much? I'm not gonna say hate because that's a strong. But why are we feared? We being black folks. Why are we feared so much? Yeah. Um, like yeah. I like I just don't understand it, man. Yeah. I don't get it. Um. So I can definitely relate to uh, the same background that you had uh, growing up. I was uh, raised in in a predominantly white neighborhood. Uh, grew up and uh, also yeah, high school predominantly white, <coughs> private schools as well. Um. Now, during those private schools, when I was playing ball in the private schools, you know, that you, you were looked at a certain way just because you were an athlete. So I didn't necessarily get those ugly looks as much, but I had definitely experienced a, a, a lot of things in my day. And I would tell you that, you know, it's something that I would just like to, I would say, embrace that moment of, of, of them maybe looking at us a certain way or maybe fearing us. Because we as black men, we... We uh we have a certain presence to ourselves and, and we 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 are, are we are strong and when we look strong and we are confident in our walk and that can be intimidating to some people, but it's something that we just need to continue to embrace that and and understand that it's it's nothing wrong with you. It's just it's just you just being the great king that you are and just continue to walk your walk. Um, it's something that you know it's gonna happen. Our our, our greatest leader and the person that we looked up look up to jesus christ endured so much in his time and 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 while he was here and and not everybody liked him and and people didn't understand him and and people just you know did horrible things to him during his walk but he stayed the course and and we as black kings need to continue to stay the course and and whatever we are called to do live that out yeah stand tall and yeah. you're gonna endure some things but be of good cheer because jesus christ has overcome the world so and as he gives us that strength and again p413 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me come on, we need man. to continue to move forward it's gonna happen it's gonna happen we're gonna have tri- trials and tribulations right. that's that's part of it but continue to move forward because you are a king stand tall be proud and smile and lead with love. Yeah, man. And you know what? And it's, it's it's funny you say you, you said two things that are key to me. Uh, number one, you said be a good cheer, and then you said smile. Yeah. And those kinds of things are something that really, really I think are, are um, exorbitantly important. Like just really, really important. 
Um, so much so that this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. There you go. At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. Now, we are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable, but Dr. Batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make sure you, you make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713 713- Seven eight nine eight six eight zero again seven one three seven eight nine eight six eight zero. Holla at the people at Elite Dental Wellness here in Houston, Texas. I love it. Smile, bling. Yeah, yeah. That was a great segue. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. it. You know, and and it's 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 amazing, man. Uh, those were some powerful words that you gave, and I appreciate Thank that, you. brother. Uh, and, and something else that happened though. That's uh. It's just daunting it, it, We still have to deal with Is our girl The, the eight time Wimbledon champion Serena Williams mm-hmm. um, She believes she's being singled out By the by What's called USADA the, And that's US Anti-Doping Agency right, right. I know you're familiar with it Right um, Ahead of Wimbledon So every year Athletes They get tested for Wimbledon yep. Right and it's, I mean, You go to these different Whether it's US Open Whether it's Wimbledon Whether it's the NCAA uh, uh, you know, tournament, whether it's, I mean, whatever the case may be, it, yeah. USAD is on top of it to 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 test you to make sure that people are not using performance enhancement drugs. Sure. I know you, I know you are familiar with this. Well, again, Serena, she's she's been a pro since she was 13 years old, so she's used to that. But she was single. She felt like she was singled out because um, it happened twice in the one week for this. And that's just really unheard of. Usada's kind of—they're very—they're very organized. If, if you really follow them as an agency, they're very organized. They've—they've—they've they've, they've really uncovered some major scandals throughout the right, years. Right. Um, Olympic scandals, uh, professional sports—you know—all uh, over uh, the, the country. Those who who, who rep it, um, because they just want it to be a fair playing field, and also want to make sure that they keep the. That's another way for the government to keep a handle on the, a drug problem. Right, illegal substance, illegal substances. So, uh, there's a lot of money going into these sports. You know, uh, Serena Williams is part owner of uh, the D- Miami Dolphins. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's and right. so, the, so the, she, but she was able to get that and yeah. buy into the ownership by her winnings as a tennis player. Yeah. So, I, I don't, I don't disagree with, you know, what they do, but she feels like she's being singled out um, because it happened twice in a week. So, so. Let's say, let, let's say you know you you were blessed enough to go over to, to, to go overseas and play and play for Team USA, right? Yeah, you know you, you're doing your thing. Every time you go out, you rep. You know you average your 13 points, your 13 rebounds, right, and your right, 13 right. assists, 13, like, you, 13, like you said, right? Yeah. Um, how would that make you feel as an athlete? If 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 all of a sudden after umpteen years as a, you know she's 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 35 36 years old she's been approached she's about 13 14 so after over 20 years well over 20 years of competition this happens is it is it is it a fluke do you feel like it's a fluke would be a fluke or do you feel like uh y'all y'all should know about now because she's never failed anything right you know what i'm saying you would like how would that make you feel i mean just speaking on first serena's situation i mean she's just so great and you know the you realize man, fam. The, but like, the thing about it, it's scary great, yeah, right? Like yeah, yeah. she just Other, had a baby. Otherworldly. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. just had a baby. Just so had a baby. for her to just have a baby and to jump back so quick like she did, they just like, wait, hold on. Everybody stop. Yeah. We need to test this girl. Is, is she a cyborg? Or right. Yeah. It's like she just came back so quick. But that's just how great she is and her her physical ability. Like that's all natural. So that can that can really scare you. I mean, and that's just man, I, again, that's just how wonderfully and beautifully we are made as as african americans that we just have these these great bodies and 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 other races as well where it can sometimes just it can be freaky to people um but for me personally i would again i would just take it as a compliment like okay you think i'm doing something uh illegally and doing something that that that, that's not right or that's um outer body and and superhuman so you want to test me three four five times cool let's do it you're not going to find anything and you're just going to realize again that man this dude is just naturally amazing 
so bring it on again you just you got you got to have a, a a different perspective on on a lot of things in life and i'm a person that always likes to find the positive in things um and it, it, it can <laughs> It can trip people out sometimes, but I just like to find the positive in everything that I experience. So if you want to do that to me, cool. You just think I'm so great and I'm going to show you how great I am and that this is just a God given natural ability. And I'm not adding any uh, uh, illegal substances to my greatness. It's just who I am. I mean, I get that. And I think but I think for her, I mean, tell everything you said was true because she is she is otherworldly um, in terms of her athletic abilities and in terms of her just being a consummate professional. I, one of the things I think she said in one of her interviews is that, you know, out of the people she knows, she's probably been tested 20 to 30 times this year right, right. versus people that have only been tested less than that. He was like, so it just makes her feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, because you think about it, she played up until almost the day she had the kid. You know, nobody really knew she was pregnant. Right. Um, and then she came back so quickly after having a major surgery. Which is amazing. Which is amazing. But then that just goes to show you what type of shape she's in. Yes. But I also think, you know, it was, on, it was trying to get into her head, too. You know what I mean? Because she's, yeah. you know, now she's playing and she was like, you know, she's she's not playing her normal game because she probably has a lot on her plate. So it's it's interesting how that goes. But again, she's a consummate professional. Yes. And as we all should strive to be when it comes to that, like you mentioned, just continue thriving and doing what you're supposed to do. The flip of that in another area, there's a doctor in Georgia who considers herself to be the dancing doctor the and dancing doctor. the dancing doctor. And she apparently is a. Um, cosmetic surgeon she does a lot of plastic surgery and while she's doing these surgeries she tapes herself dancing and she posts it these you know her calling herself the dancing doctor she tapes it she posts it um and you know a lot of male practice suits have come up against her recently like five so far yeah. um uh, one person actually said that they felt like they they got a botched surgery because of of a brazilian butt lift it was a botched surgery uh. Um, although I'm trying to figure out why do we keep doing these butt surgeries? People we know better by now, but okay, man. man, okay, that's just part of it, right? I don't know, I understand like why we want to change ourselves so badly, but <laughs> anywho, so um, she she's five mile practice suits this year. She offered, um, she you know the board told her she need to give up her license under some. Um, she gives it up for two years. She has to go through some you know s some type of. Um, actions where she has to prove that she's not going to go down this road but she cannot hold herself as a doctor anymore she can't say that she's a doctor for two and a half years and they can will consider giving her her license back but she also has to pay people as well so she had to pay out i think two or three suits and she's in in um litigation for two more mm -hmm. it's just it's really a crazy situation because my question was when i read it was how how has social media really played a part in that because why did you feel like you needed to post at work right. you don't have a job that you need to be posting you don't need to be posting while you having surgery now if you want to i don't know if you're trying to do this because you're trying to get a deal like some of the doctors on these sh those shows that you know these married not even no no not even a really rally show but the rally shows where they're actually fixing people you know the, that oh, little botch. botched and yeah. stuff like that like i don't know if you were trying to get that type of show but you create you you hire a crew for that and you 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 actually create a package for that, but you don't That's do crazy. right. But you don't do that while you're operating, right? And it's like again, once again, was that like is this the impact of social media? Do we have to record everything we do to give it validity, or is it just not enough for us to be great at what we do, the consummate professional? Because I feel like if you're great at what you do as a doctor, you're gonna get repeat business. Right. People will refer you if they feel like they had a great experience. That's my experience. Yes. I don't go to doctors that I feel like are whack. And I and I definitely do read the reviews. Yes, you <laughs> should for sure. I mean, ha, well, well, how do you feel about that? I mean, because I'm like, why are you dancing? Why are you do right. give me a liposuction incision? Why Man, are we, why are we know, cutting with a scalpel in my hand? Right, right. That uh, that that is interesting. Uh, that is new news to me on that one, and that is <coughs> interesting. But Excuse it's um, uh, it's yes, yeah, social media is is a drug. Woo! Is it, and it, it's a it's a horrible drug that people just really get lost in. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you that. Um, you shouldn't have to go to those lengths to gain business. Right. And I think she lost it, right? So maybe at one point that was her passion to be a doctor and to want to help people. But now because of her conforming to the world, mm -hmm. uh, she's lost herself and she's lost that, that gift and that purpose that she's had. And, and I, I really hate that she's gone that far. Um, but it's not necessary. I think it's it, it's way more beneficial uh, for people to uh, 
uh, go to doctors off of, like you said, word of mouth and reviews. Yeah. I don't need all that crazy advertisement to make me. Because I'm like trying to figure out what what type of. First of all, are you mentally stable? Let's right. just start That's there because because yeah. I'm trying to figure out why is it important for you to be dancing while you're you're a surgeon. Yeah. Now I do know that surgery. Every da- doctor does their own thing. Some play music. Some you know whatever it takes for you to get into your thing. I get that. That's not my place to say. As long as I come out whole. Exactly. I come in better than I can when left. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I come out better than I came in. But I, I don't think you need to record it. Mm-mm. And then for her mind, she said that well, they were all consented videos. They were all staged and they were planned. Either way, people have a problem with it. It's too many distractions as well. I mean, yeah. you say she might say, "Oh, I'm not distracted. That helps me do my work." But I mean, that's just too much going on at one time. When you, I would really love for you to focus on my whatever it is or whatever, and not do the moonwalk while right cutting and separate I'm like and you got the evidence to show that you were distracted right, so i mean right. that that makes it even this is not hearsay this is something else so it's absolutely ridiculous now there the, there's other things going on of course we know like i said this is a really strange and interesting time that we're living in yes. where we're seeing more and more aggressiveness from um those persons that are are paid to protect us um one of the things that happened recently was a three-year-old child who um, was with her mom actually is getting a pad of $2.5 million because the police actually pointed a, a gun at her chest, the Chicago police. And at the same, during the same time, they hand, they, her handcuffed mother, they hit her handcuffed mother in front of her. So it was a very traumatic experience. Yes. Um, again, she was three years old when all this happened. And, you know, rightfully she's being awarded money, but is money always enough? Like the price of justice, is this really just? Because number one, I thought there were, I know in war it is, but I thought there were rules of engagement. You know what I mean? Like you don't do certain things. You don't, you know, I know in war you don't, you're not supposed to uh, kill women and children or something like that. Unless they're like armed soldiers or something like that. But this is a situation where it's a three-year-old child. And we're seeing these cases more and more and more unarmed persons being treated like criminals. I mean, for me having kids and for me looking at my nieces and my nephews, I I get very concerned about who they're encountering in the course of their day, even at their schools. I mean, I mean, I know, like you mentioned, you went to a private school. But how was that situation for you when you, you like as a young person taught to revere the police? How do you look at it now or taught to revere? You know, those piece of people are put in communities to help us. How do you feel about that situation now? I mean, it's, it's, it's today's world is definitely making it very tough for us to be able to look at uh, the people that is supposed to serve and protect us in a, in a good light because of all these uh, situations that's happening. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's... um. It's, it's hard. I, I totally agree. And when you see something like that or you hear about something as, as serious as that, as, as an officer pointing a gun and, and pounding a gun on a three-year-old's chest, that's ridiculous. Like, that's that just makes no sense. It, 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 I, I can't even speak on that and understand that. And it it's uh, unfortunate that that happened. Um, but, yeah, you just have to also look at the fact that you have to look at the uh, the other side of it, like, you know, even though it's it's not it's not seen in a in a good light, and these people aren't 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 people that we you know we look at uh, in a positive manner. But if we go the opposite, then it could be us that has that that gun pointed at our chest or pounded on our chest, and that's unfortunate. But you know, um, we can't we can't we can't always just just want to just fight those people and 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 and, and fight back or shoot them because it, it just it's no win for anybody. But what is the remedy? So that's the that's the issue I think that people are having. And like, okay, I understand that we can't necessarily meet that type of force yeah, with that force. True. Although you're taught, police officers are taught to meet force with force. But what what do they do? Like, how do we how do we make sure that our our communities are still safe when we are? Some people are really affected by the aggressive nature of it all. And we can kind of talk more about this in a second, but the aggressive nature of those who are in charge of making right. sure to police our communities, how, how do we restore the peace in the homes of those people who have to live, right. especially in, in areas that are heavily policed? Right. That's, that's very interesting, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Because this portion of our show is sponsored by The Sphere. 
Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement needs and advertising handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. Again, the number is 832-772-7789 or email us at advertise at the sphere.tv. So one of the things we were talking about, Kaylin, mm -hmm. is that, you know, we have to think about how our communities are being handled, pure persons of color, and how do we restore the peace back into these communities? I know we have a lot of advocates on political levels um, really speaking out for us. One of those persons are, is like Maxine Waters. She's actually out there yes. in California raising heck for the people. Um, because she's definitely in a community that's been affected by a lot of the things that happens to persons of color, not necessarily black people, but also brown people. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that conversation gets really confused and conflicted. Sometimes they think that our advocacy, especially when they look like us, are only advocating for <laughs> us. But we're advocating for everyone yeah. who is in all minorities, yeah, all minorities mm -hmm. who are in the positions of being feeling powerless. Um, so I know last week. Um, Maxine, we circling back. She mm -hmm. may mention that you know, anytime we see anyone from the um, the president's cabinet, we need to confront them and let them know that they're not doing their job or they're doing a poor job of um, taking care of the people. Right. Um, and you know, we need to make sure. And, and, and I guess the response from that was very divided because some people felt like she was inciting um, a negative confrontation, and some people was like, "Well, she said the right thing," because we def definitely need our voices to be heard. Um, and there's some division about what yeah. that looks like. Since that time, she received death threats. She canceled two or three of her uh, meetings last week because she was like, you know, it's just not a safe environment. Or her her people told her the service, her her security yeah. told her it wasn't safe. Um, but when she did come back and speak, she said, "Well, if you're gonna shoot, you better shoot straight." Mm. Listen, mm. she yeah, reclaiming Mac her. <laughs> time you Auntie Maxine I mean? is not here to play with y'all and all. she's like listen I've been on this <laughs> earth for a long time I've seen a lot of stuff and if you're gonna shoot y'all better shoot straight um and so she I, I don't have any doubt that she means what she says um because you know people say there's nothing nothing worse than an old black man mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than an old black woman I'm not trying to I'm, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but no, yeah, but no one, seriously yeah. though it's 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 the experiences they've had they've seen so they've much, seen so man. much and she's been you know she's really? el has been elevated to this level for a reason right and she definitely does speak without fear a lot of things she says some of us regular people would never say mm -hmm. we would never say it out of fear um, and she said it out loud knowing that there is a base that does not follow her. Um, my question to you all, would y'all have ever said anything like that? You know, just it's almost like you're poking the bear. So, so. Uh, Considering I, our history. I, I, ooh. Yeah, I would. Kayla and my life. Maybe and, I shouldn't ask you because yeah, I know you know yeah. the answer. Because, I know the because answer. Because, I, listen, I, I'm straight to the point. Um, I, I think you need people like that. Though. I think you need all sides of the spectrum. You need those persons who can be politically savvy and politically correct, right? You need those persons who can toe the line and kind of walk the middle because they can at that they can they can be the ones that communicate um clearly what a Maxine Waters is trying to do, right? Uh, or not necessarily trying to do, but 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 kind of smooth it over, saying no, we're we're that serious. But let let me give it to you in a more palatable way. You need those persons, but you also need the folks that's that's gonna get in your face. And, and you know, it's like a basketball team, right? Um, you have a scorer or two, you have a shooter, you have somebody who's a rebounder or a defensive specialist, and then you have that one guy that Draymond Green that's a dog, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Or, or that Charles Oakley that's a dog, right? You know, you have somebody that's a throwback. Yeah, it's throwback. Oak. You know what I'm saying? Um. Uh, but you have somebody on the team that's just that's going to go do the dirty work. And I think that Maxine. Listen, she's, she's a little been, bit of everything. She's a little no. bit of everything. She, she knows how to. But she's, but she's been in the game too long. Like you said, she's seen so much. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, you know, well over 60. So, so you can. She's, I mean, she was born in the 40s. Right. And so it's one of those things. 40s or 50s. So it's one of those things that she's seen a lot. And you're just not going to be afraid. She's not going to be afraid. And for me. I don't. I, I love it. I'm yeah. not tripping. Yeah, I'm not tripping I, I, at all. Uh, I actually had the privilege to uh, witness Auntie Maxine yeah. 
live and in color this uh this past tsu graduation mm-hmm. for the law degrees uh, law students and um she took her time you know she you know usually when you're reclaiming you do, it she reclaimed it definitely <laughs> she definitely reclaimed her time and she took the opportunity i mean it was a commence she was a commencement speaker and she took probably like an hour and a half of that time calling out all these lawyers like in office and, and just saying these are these are the, the crooked lawyers and the ones that wow. that are on trial for this that and they're like she was listing all of these lawyers this why wasn't she at my hood Right. She should have been yeah. when I got hooded. Like, well, these are things that people need to know. Right. Yeah. Like, we was, come we on, was Auntie Maxine. We was waiting for a moment for her to like rile up the crowd and all that. She's like, no, I'm gonna take this time, reclaim my time to give y'all the heads up on give all the these game. crooked yeah. lawyers. So you, for one, won't become like them. You can be better than them. And then at the end of, she's like, oh yeah. Congratulations. Get <laughs> <laughs> a party rolling. Right, right. Bam. Uh, I said what I said. Y'all guys. Hey, no, y'all, y'all got it. Gave y'all the heads up. Y'all got uh, it. Yeah. It's documented dope. now. But, but, but it's again, in somebody's you, archive. Right, I think you need right. those persons. Yes, you need did. the whistleblower. You need the dog. You need the person that's going to say, listen, I've been doing this for too long. And this way works in certain circumstances and in certain circum- uh, certain environments. But now we got to do something a little different. Right. right? I, you know, so I, I think all sides need to be presented. I think that's key what you just said. It some things work for certain things and for for what the environment, the social climate that we're yeah. in right now, it's important that we have we're going to have to have um things that deviate from the normal course of business because it's it's high time for change and it's just it's we're in year 2 right now of a different administration. I think sometimes well we had um 8 years of change and hope right i think we are really comfortable with that mm. and so now we're thinking that was the norm thinking that was the norm and now we're, now we're really seeing that wasn't necessarily the norm that was actually abnormal yeah. and we need to actually take time as a as a community as a society and and really do our due diligence to start cre- controlling our narrative of what that's really going to be instead of just voting like we talked about just just voting in presidential elections we need to vote in every election every, to every. make sure we have the right voices speaking on our behalf that's right. and i think that's where we're dropping the ball and we're all we i'm sure all of us have been guilty at it for some point but now we're it's being very clear that we need to really become more active um speaking of which changing the narrative um the one of the narratives that have to be changed is one with roseanne barr Mm. i think we we're circling back on this one it's another one we're circling back on because past two weeks we were talking about one of the things she did um the the tweet the tweet that she did about a person that was sitting in uh president obama's off office um, administration and then last week she talked about how she you know she didn't mean to say what she said it was misinterpreted the this recent thing was she came out just recently I think this was yesterday and said that she's been offered a lot of opportunities on television for another show and or a uh, position as a news person um, reporting whatever they're going to report um, I don't think this this is not surprising to me because this is how just divisive and how emboldened, like you said, yeah. um, the persons that really side with some of her views, whether she meant it or not, feel like she's somebody that can speak for them. Yeah. And they can cover her as long as they have money. You know, it, it, it's simple. It's really simple. She's good TV. Definitely. She People are going to tune in. Yeah. Look at Rush, look at Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. Right. And look he was look, look at Howard Stern. Time. Look at Howard Stern. Long people time. that are opinionated, people that are outside of the box right. or whether it's good or bad whatever the barometer is right uh people tune in and watch it that's just that's just who we are as, as humans we, we go to that outlier we go to that 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 thing that's um polarizing so to speak and we tune in and then we talk about it and we get somebody else to tune in and then we now we tweet about it and now we put facebook status about it and, and instagram stories about it you know and, and then you go and, and, look it, at and it, it becomes and, and it becomes money because as long as an advertiser can attach their brand to it mm-hmm. it makes money for them because so they know it's going to be recycled over she, and over she's again. good tv she it, it, it doesn't shock me you have that element along with the element that you just spoke about kira um in terms of us being the alt right or not shit. I don't even like giving them credit because that's a whole different conversation. But extremes, yeah, on the each extremes, side. yeah, the extremes on each side mm-hmm. being the ones that scream the loudest right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kieran and I were talking about this the other day that I believe that most people are kind of somewhere in the middle. You know what I'm saying? But you have extreme left and extreme right. They're the ones that are doing most of the screaming. Right. And so when you have someone who 
uh, an, um, a celebrity or a public figure that that identifies with the ones who are screaming the loudest, that's going to turn into ad dollars. Mm. It is what it is, it's man. True. I mean, you, you're marketing. It, it is what it is. It, it. So it, it, she's good TV in terms of for from a business perspective. People are going to tune in and look at her. We're humans. We're so weird because we actually are attracted to the things we don't like. Yeah. How many times have you looked? You grossed out by a surgery show, but then you just I can't I just can't take my eyes off of right. it. It's almost yeah. like not knowing it yeah. makes it I don't know. It's like weird. Wanna, well, don't people know. are so afraid of horror movies, but can't stop going to them. Yeah. You, you I, see what I'm saying? Or we watch just, like this. Like what's the purpose yeah, of this? Yeah, that's it. That's a good what's one. What's the right. purpose <laughs> of doing or doing that's, this? That's like perfect, you know right. what I'm saying? So it's Rose, not so making it worse. We're I mean less creatures. Absolutely. We're curious. Absolutely. That's the thing. That's that whole garden of Eden. That's man. That's that whole Eve. Man. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> the curiosity. The curiosity. Yeah, and uh, so that's the thing, though. We that's also that can, can be like a, a subconscious situation, right? That's mm-hmm. us acting in the flesh, mm-hmm. uh, and it's just so important that we need to be conscious and aware in in what we're doing because we have the ability to not uh, look at that and to support that and to you know keep our eyes closed, like you said, instead of doing that. But you know, it's just. It's something where we have to work at it, and mm-hmm. it needs to turn into a habit. So that's the only problem. But yeah, it's just when we are when we are just going with the flow and 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 just acting off our subconscious, and, and that's how, that's what happens. We need to be more conscious and be more aware of, of our actions and the things we do and the things we pay attention to. And I think there's another thing. I mean, in this being aware, we're in a very interesting society because, like you said, we're being attracted to things we don't really like, right? Or the curious nature of it all. Everyone is like constantly watching everyone's next move mm-hmm. or the next, especially in our sure. very, um, very visible society, yeah. right? Public, Every, public society. Yeah, Everybody's man. waiting like on pins and needles. So people waiting on pins and needles for what? The n- announcement this morning, LeBron James signed with the Lakers. People were waiting on that. A lot of people were disappointed. Some people were very happy. It's a division. Some people are now going to be Lakers fans because they, they stopped being Lakers fans. There's so many Lakers, Lakers, Lakers fans. Lakers nations everywhere. Lake, oh, my God. The Lake Show. I mean, <laughs> yeah, everybody's baby. back on the Laker bandwagon <laughs> after, you know, after, after Kobe, yeah, after Kobe left. Kobe gone. You know, <laughs> and it's interesting to see how that worked. But, you know, a lot of people like us Houstonians, we, we wanted him to come, but it's probably best that he didn't because now we won't go into debt like Listen, you mentioned. I, I, I released. A, 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 I put a, a tweet out in, in, in on Instagram and on Facebook. Go to at Senior Wapo seven one three. Check it out. And uh, what Plug. I said nice. was, Plug. Uh, I said I th- I want to thank Kobe Bryant for no m- helping. I, I mean, I'm sorry, LeBron James for helping me make a sound financial decision. Right. And that was n- not coming here because I was going to get a credit card and max it out on season tickets. I wasn't going to let him, y'all. It wasn't right. going to happen. She probably wasn't going. I wasn't going to happen. But it was a good idea though. It was just because we, to see LeBron. James Harden and Chris Paul all play together. That would have been a beautiful situation. I mean, we you know we had a strong season. Oh yeah, we had a very strong we season. We were a hamstring away. A yeah, ham, that literally a hamstring away. A hamstring that was away. But I mean, I, but it was good that it happened. A hamstring. Yeah. In a way, not that it happened because I don't want Chris Paul to get injured anymore, but this showed his value. Yeah, it showed how valuable he was to the Rockets. You know yes. what I mean? Like we needed him. And he was he's clutch. He's yeah. all, he's and that clutch player. Hundred million, hundred one million dollar extension. Listen, he shout he, out, he, oh shout out to that money. Okay, and yeah. now did I'm just we gonna close on this. Let's one. do it. Did y'all see the video? Oh boy, of Dame Dash confronting Lee Daniels. <laughs> yes. at a Diana Ross concert. Yes, using his cell phone to record it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much telling everybody that that man owed him two million dollars and go ahead and get run his money. Run that man his money. Run that man his check. He was like, I wasn't even invited to Precious. Come to on. Precious. He wanted to be a part of Precious. <laughs> he, he wanted like, to see it. But that's why like, you could invited me to the yeah. red carpet yeah, for that man. I gave, that. I, right. I gave you two million, man. You could at least put me on something. I'm an investor. Right. So so let, let's do a one clap for Damon having two million first. You know what I'm saying? First of all, the black man had two million. To give. You know what I'm saying? Let's, I, let's, let's I you know. I mean, that right let's now. be clear. This man, does, it's not like he's not sitting on money. He's sitting on money. Yeah. He just, he's just not visible. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you I'm know, giving art you, galleries. And and, you know, if I give you two million, that means I can afford to lose two million. But I expected to get my money back yeah. in or, some form, or some recognition, or right. or put me into another business. That video deal. right there, yeah. y'all, is everything. At this point, Lee Daniels is Lee, clocking wait, the dollars. What Lee Daniels had on a snuggie, y'all? He's Lee Daniels. He was cold. He was Let me stop. I'm being no, petty. No, fam, does have on yeah, a, a snuggie. It's a blanket, y'all. It's a blanket. He got like a <laughs> scarf, like one of those real no, nice, like Versace he got on, scarf. No, that's no, no, no. But he got on a big tea, 
Bazaar <laughs> or King's Flea Market fleece. Yo. No, yeah, that's a blanket. That's a that's fleece, a son. Blanket. Oh, but, a but this is the thing. But this, the, and this is what makes it oh, so. Wow. This is what make it makes it so interesting because it's, it's not like because it's not like Kira uh, that that he that he does he doesn't clock the money now. Yeah, yeah. You know he has he's had so many successful. He shows. Had, he made the two million couple of, couple of seasons ago. Yeah, he made the two million ten times over. Yeah. yeah so you know what I'm saying? After the Butler. Yeah, after the but the Butler was successful. Precious was successful. Right. Empire is one of the top shows on 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 television right now. Like yeah. he's really and so it, it's. A shame that we, and this is something that that we that, that we may need to discuss a little more. This is at a later date, but it's a shame that we as as uh, African Americans, as Black folks, we do our other brothers and sisters like that. Man. You see what I'm saying? Like maybe we, we, we wouldn't did the bank like that. No, they would have came for you. They would have right. claimed their time. <laughs> <You> <laughs> know <what I> mean? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> they, they would have vaccine watered your. They would have repossessed your, your house, <laughs> foreclosed, Facts. foreclosed your house, repossessed it's your so, car. Right. It's, it's so, and, and it's unfortunate that he had that he had to go to these to these to these links, and then he released the video. Max or er, uh, Lee Daniels released mm-hmm. the video saying that he was going to give it back to him. But I'm, I was I was looking at the comments. I love trolling the comments on these kind of things, and and everybody was the sentiment was resounding in that they were like, dude, he shouldn't have had to put you on Front Street no. on the internet in front of and you can't and be mad millions about that of views right for, for, for him to do that you know and what I'm you saying? can't be mad about the fact that he pulled out a camera and recorded you it sh- i'm glad he did it because that was the sm- the best the best way to get his money that monique told y'all he was a snake <laughs> She Y'all, Monique, 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 Monique got tape. Monique got a tape on everybody. She Bruh. got another tape. We we not even gonna get on that. She got a tape. She got a tape on Tyler. She got a tape on everybody. I almost said something. And up. I just you know so I you know the, the, now I'm sitting there talking about listen. We need to make sure we we need to start. I don't know how. Is there a way to you secure somebody to make sure they ain't taping recording right, your stuff? Because I'm like these people running around here with recorders and. Taping they on their phone, like keep your smartphone in that other room and turn right, it off right. before and, and you enter and, my and, house. And, and don't and don't take it into the operating room either. I'm petty. I'm okay, sorry. you are petty. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we have I'm had sorry. an amazing time today. We thank you so wow. much for joining us yeah, today. Thank, thank you for sharing P413 with us. Thank you, bro. It, it was amazing. I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. We usually have great feedback because yeah. we're you know full of banter. So, mm-hmm. so, so let everyone know how they can get in contact with you or follow you and what you got going on real quick. Yeah, so uh, website is allthingsp413.com. You can also follow me on Instagram. It's the number four, M-A-N underscore P413. And also Facebook is uh, P4 colon 13. Um, just reach out to me. Also uh, email wecanp413 at gmail.com. Just get in contact with me find me let's let's link up uh boot camps is every saturday morning at 8 a.m at various parks all over uh the city of houston mainly we do it at buffalo bayou park mm-hmm. and uh, we get it in there but we also have private training throughout the week um just a lot of things going on in the future that i'm looking forward to and just um just so happy at the space that i'm in right now and i'm, I'm appreciating this moment as well amen That's amen so just man. just be present in a moment i love it i be love present it in a moment and thank you all for tuning in again we can look forward to seeing you guys next monday my name is kira laws you can follow me on instagram at the modern day cindy and that's cindy with an i not a y and it's your man Kayla laws aka the style professor aka send your wop aka yeah, I know. Like, like, yeah, like, like the hip hop artist. Man, man, do me a favor. Uh, follow me on all social media outlets at Senior Wapo seven one three. This is Society. Now we'll see you next time. See you next week. <laughs>